Hey guys, Michael here with Do It Justice. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you guys how Jenny and I are going to be saving energy uh, while boondocking or dry camping in our RV. So when it comes to boondocking or dry camping in an RV, you'll realize conservation is a very important factor if you want to have a successful camping trip. So to give you some context on how we're going to make it more successful for ourselves in the future, I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through the two types of systems that are on an RV. Now, if you haven't seen my DIY solar power series, I talk about the fundamental differences between AC and DC power. So be sure to go check out that video if you haven't seen it, because it will give you a little bit more understanding of what the power is actually used for. But essentially what you have in the living quarters of your RV is you have a DC powered system and you have an AC powered system. Now in our specific system, the DC fuse box and the AC breaker box are both located underneath our refrigerator. So that gives you an idea of where the power is distributed from, but DC power is drawn from your battery, whether it's the house battery that came installed in your RV, the living quarter section of your RV, or in our circumstance, we have a solar system, a 600 watt solar system that has a solar battery bank that's actually sitting underneath this inverter. So our DC system is wired into our solar battery bank. So that battery bank delivers the energy to all of the lights, pumps, fans, and low powered appliances that we have here in the RV. When it comes to the AC system in your RV, there are typically three ways you can deliver power to plugs like these standard three-prong plugs like you find in your normal standard house. So you can either have an AC generator, you can plug your RV into shore power like uh, an RV park or your friend or family member's home, or you can have an inverter which transforms the power, the 12 volt power coming from your batteries into 120 volt AC power that goes to these plugs so you can power your standard AC appliances. During our first year of full-time RV living, the majority of the time we were dry camping or boondocking, meaning we weren't plugged into shore power at an RV park, and we didn't run our generator the entire time. So the majority of the time we would be getting our power from our AC inverter, which uh, is hooked up to our solar power system. So what we would normally do is just take our computer chargers or our iPhone chargers, we'd plug that right into the inverter itself. So we would flip on the inverter, get power to all of our devices, all of our AC devices, and everything like that. But this is actually a really inefficient way of delivering power to some of your devices. And by some of your devices, I mean devices like your phone or, or your laptop computers. Those are actually DC devices, meaning they're being charged through DC power. But you may be wondering, how are they being charged through DC power if I'm plugging them into an AC inverter. Well, the reason that is is because of these little square things. Now, they'll look different on different appliances, but what these are is they're little converters. They're actually taking the 120 volt AC power from your inverter or from the wall outlets, and they're dropping that down to a voltage that's perfect for whatever the specific device is, and it's DC power that's going into the device. So this is an extremely inefficient way of doing it because during those conversions from either DC to AC or AC to DC, you're losing power in the form of heat. So these boxes will heat up, also the inverter will heat up because of that conversion, because it's losing energy through inefficiency. If you're wondering what devices you have that are DC powered, just remember anything with a battery on it, like a phone, a battery backup, anything like that is gonna be DC powered. Also, anything that's USB powered or anything that has a converter built into the charging cord itself, that's all stuff that is DC powered. And it's actually gonna surprise you how many appliances you have that are actually DC powered and not AC powered. Now when it comes to the efficiency for the conversions from DC power to AC power and then AC power to DC power, you may be wondering what those efficiencies are. Well, it kind of varies based on the appliance you have and the, the device that you're using and the application that you have it put in. But for us, I know for a fact this inverter is 90% efficient. That's what it says on the box. That's what it says on all of the advertising for this inverter in particular. And it's a 2,500 watt inverter. Now, another thing I read up on forums is that inverters are rated based on efficiency 
of full load coming out of that inverter. So we have a 2,500 watt inverter. So the closer you are to that 2,500 watt maximum load, the closer you are to the 90% efficiency rating. Now, the lower you go from that 2,500 watts, so if you're only drawing 300 watts or 600 watts out of this inverter, the lower the efficiency rating. So for this illustration of showing you how inefficient it can be, I'm gonna just say this inverter runs at about 80% efficiency from drawing power from the battery and delivering it to the iPhone. So let's just say I'm gonna power the iPhone, right? Now you also may be wondering, what's the inefficiency from going from AC power from the inverter to DC power to power the iPhone. Well, I also read up online that it's about 80% efficient. So you lose about 20% of the efficiency by converting it from AC power to DC power to charge your iPhone. So let's take those two numbers and let's talk about how it works. Right now I have my iPhone charging through this inverter and it's losing an excessive amount of energy based on our little illustration that I'm going to talk to you about today. So it's losing, it's only about 80% efficient coming from the battery underneath this inverter to the inverter when it converts from 12 volt DC to 120 volt AC. So you're losing, you're only about 80% efficient there. Remember, because we're not close to the maximum load that's drawing out of this. This is really drawing a small amount of energy from this inverter. So it's a lot less efficient than the maximum efficient rating of 90%. So again, we're calling it about 80% efficient coming from the battery to the inverter. Now, when you're coming from the inverter to the iPhone, again, you have this little converter, this dongle thing here, that's losing another 20% of the efficiency. So again, it's only 80% efficient coming from the inverter to the battery. So if you wanna get the efficiency rating from the battery to the iPhone, what you have to do is you need to think, okay, I'm only getting 80% from the battery to the inverter. I'm only getting 80% from the inverter to the iPhone. So what I have to do is I have to take 80% times 80% or 0.8 times 0.8 and that gives me about 64% efficient. Now that's crazy. That means that if I was charging this iPhone, I'm losing over a third of the energy, the potential energy that can come from those batteries in the form of heat because if it wasn't so cold out here, this inverter would be heating up, it would be overheating, and it's still losing energy in the form of heat. And same with this converter, it's losing energy in the form of heat. So really, this is an insanely inefficient way of charging your devices. So I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do it moving forward. To account for these inefficiencies and make it way more efficient for us to get energy from the battery to our appliances, I'm gonna basically cut out the middleman, I'm gonna cut out the inverter, for the majority of the appliances that we're gonna power. So when it comes to delivering power to our iPhone, I'm gonna use something like this right here. This is a DC splitter. And what I'm gonna do is our inverter luckily has a DC outlet, which is actually a cigarette plug that plugs into it. So what this splitter does is it allows me to take my iPhone USB charger, plug it directly into the one amp port on here, and then look at here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Woohoo! Sorry, it's cold in here. And we're charging the phone. And you'll notice that the inverter is not on. So we actually don't have to have the inverter on because the power is coming directly from the batteries underneath to the iPhone itself. It's awesome. It's gonna be a great way for us to save a lot of energy. Now, I'm also gonna show you a few other ways that you can deliver DC power to your DC appliances. So let me go ahead and cover those right now. So I'm here in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you another way that you can potentially deliver DC power to your DC appliances. And that's by adding a USB switch to an existing DC source on your RV. So for example, this is our hot water heater switch. It's being supplied with DC power. Our friends Tom and Kate over at Morton's on the Move have wired in a USB outlet to their hot water heater switch, which is already being supplied with DC power. Now this is a great way to power all of your USB powered appliances directly from either your house battery or your solar battery bank. Luckily, we're not gonna have to cut into our walls and wire in a new DC outlet because 
our RV came with them pre-wired in. It's these guys right here and there's cigarette outlets um, that were already pre-wired. There's one here in the bedroom and there's also one underneath the dinette. And we're also lucky enough to have one that is attached to our inverter, but that's one that we had to add in ourselves. So I also need to replace this one in the back here because this one is extremely corroded. So um, that is from all of the water damage. If you haven't seen that video, we basically had to rebuild this entire wall and yeah, we have to just replace this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing re replaced, show you guys how we're gonna use these and then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. Okay guys, I just got this cigarette outlet replaced and I've got an adapter here to try to plug my iPhone. And unfortunately, when I plug it in, nothing is going to it. So there's something else inside of here that's been damaged or that's not right, that's disconnected. Um, I just don't have the time or the energy to try to do that right now. I may tackle that in a future video or in another time, but if you guys know any specific thing that I need to check um, to see if this could work for us, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from your advice. Otherwise, um, we have a nice pretty outlet here, which is great for us. So it looks better back here, uh, but it's okay that we don't have this here. We still have two other places that we can charge from. So let me go show you how we'll use the power. All right, so the main way we're gonna be using the power to charge our iPhone and our MacBook Pro in the next RV trip that we do, we're gonna be using this DC outlet, DC plug that we bought for our MacBook Pro. So this bypasses this guy right here so you don't need this because you're not plugging it into AC you're plugging it directly into DC power so we're gonna have this plugged underneath our dinette as you can see down there there's a light on so that outlet works that's the one that was previously installed in the RV the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna follow me here is I'm gonna be using this as the splitter off of this inverter. So this will be able to charge all of our USB appliances as well as the option to charge um, our computer as well. So these are the two places we're gonna be getting energy from the majority of the time. So we actually won't have to have this inverter on only if we wanna power really high powered appliances or if we wanna really bulk charge things, especially DC appliances that can't be charged directly through the DC outlets. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope this was really insightful to you guys and I hope you can use some of this information in your specific applications. If you like this video, definitely hit that like button down below. And as always, guys, I will see you on the next video.